Hello everybody! I am Raphael Perry and it's time for some more Battle Brothers with the Beasts and Exploration DLC. Now, I haven't played this in a week or two so let's see what jobs are available here. First off we're at a company of 10 trying to reach a company of 12. Got a hatchet there we could sell off if we wanted to. And we got some nasty injuries and just general body damage. Oh, yeah. How are we doing for money? We do not have the money to sit comfortably. I think we can still afford to take a one skull contract, but that two skull contract is starting to become what we need just to pay the bills. Also, we are shockingly low on medical supplies. And they are never cheap. They're always really expensive. Speaking of really expensive, the food prices here are a bit on the high side as well. If only I had a shield. Um, your standard round shield is a good... Um, I, I use it as a kind of point of reference for the price and value of everything else in an area. Uh, let's see. Okay, now that's a... I think I will sell that wooden flail and that hatchet. Pickaxe, mm, iffy. There we go. Is there anyone here who could benefit from this? Yes, there is. Horst, the priest. Absolutely. Alright, one skull contract, what do you got? Okay. Oswald the Wise stares out his window, watching a group of men loading cargo into a number of wagons. He talks without looking your way, while his player quickly checks the game is recorded. I have an important delivery heading out to Wildwacht, roughly a day south of here. Unfortunately, a competitor outbid me in acquiring a local band of caravan guards. Now I need your services. Let's talk numbers, if you're interested. Indeed, let's talk money. He jingles a bag of coins. This will be yours if you help me out on this. You are to receive 150 crowns when the contract is done. You know what? It's a trip on the road. Hopefully it's relatively safe and we can recover from our injuries. We'll take the deal. And remember, the chieftains of yore do not quibble over the pay. And... Yep, we should just about make a bit of money on that. Not much. Make about 40, 39, 40. Oh, that's unfortunate. While pulling inventory duty... Sorry. While pulling inventory duty, Wenzel with a good hand alerts you to a bit of dire news. A good sum of bread has gone bad. Simple and to the point. You nod and thank him for telling you quickly. We've lost some bread. We could have used that. We could indeed. And here we are. And it's a fortress, which means there'll be no jobs for us. Better try to sell something then. The wagon train arrives in Wildwacht, each cart bumbling and tumbling their tall wheels over mounds of dried mud. The caravan hands work to unload the cargo, a few of them fighting off a beggar or two. The leader of the train hands you a satchel and that's about all he does. He's too busy with his work to say much more to you. The silence is appreciated. Wildwacht now is well supplied. Let's get him there then. Prices should be good. We could even hire one of these fellows. You know what? Let's try this fellow out. Give him a few exercises with some of our men. See how he works. Humbert the Butcher. Has no quirks. Uh, Bertold the Apprentice. Again, no quirks. Oh, let's hire the Butcher. They tend to have good critical chances. Humbert the Butcher, lots of health, some fatigue, and resolve. I think he deserves a two-handed weapon. And somewhat better protection. We'll keep him at this end of the line for now. 
next to our loyal miner. And we'll see if we can get good money for these bludgeons. Oh dear. Yes. Um, yeah, that's not too bad. Can't remember what it was up the road. But that, that's a reasonable price. Yeah, we'll sell off these. We'll hold on to the Gordon Tag for now. That's a really good price for tools. And medicine. Hell, we're just going to waste money now. Shopping. Getting some supplies in. Then we'll head on back up the road and try and pick up that two skull contract if it's still available. In Grunbach. Oh, you know what? I didn't pay too much attention to the time when I started recording, but it was roughly then. He says, looking at the clock beside the computer. Oh, if that caravan is for two skull contract, I'll be kicking myself, I tell you. Oh, well. It's not! Hooray! A drunken woman throws herself at you. She practically drools licentious horrors into your ear and you beat her off with a stick. One onlooker rushes to your side, yanking the wench away. Be gone, whore! How many times must I tell you? The lady saunters off, clambering from one man to another like a animal between tree branches. Your rescuer offers his hand. I am Ragnar, a man of some import. Oswald the Wise has been looking for you. People, please follow me and I shall bring you to him. Well, I'm all ears. Oswald the Wise. Wow, he is busy sending parcels all round the kingdom. <laughs> Folds his hands together when he sees you. This might be a strange question, but how interested are you in making a delivery for me? You explain that for the right price, such a journey would be a welcome departure from the usual killing and dying that goes on around you. The man clasps his hands together. Excellent! Unfortunately, I don't expect it to be quite like that. It's uh, of enough import to garner unsavory attention, which is why I'm looking to hire sellswords in the first place. It's going to Goffmund, two days or so southeast of here by road, where a man by the name of Ludger of Goffmund is waiting for it to fall into his hands. So you see, this won't be the departure you speak of, but it can be a fine payday if you're interested. Well, how much have you got on offer? He straightens up. So, a payment. You are to receive 740 crowns when the contract is done. A very fair price, all told. Which means this might be quite dangerous, and he did warn us but someone else wants it, so we'll accept the offer, but we will seriously consider doing some shopping before we leave town. Uh, 118 a day. We can't really afford a nice helmet or anything. Oh, those are some really nice helmets. Oh, there's a salet, some flat-topped helms, kettle hats, you know, all sorts. But sadly, so this is new. This is new armor. This scale armor is new. Uh, the heavy lamella, I think, looks slightly new, but I'm not so sure. You know what? We better sell this. There we go. Food will be provided on the journey, and it can go bad. Oh, that will go bad soon. Alright. Let's head out. It would be nice to hire one more person, but we can't afford it now. At our destination, maybe. Let's go. We have... Oh, bugger, it's a delivery. It's not an escort. Goffmund is... Hiding behind... Come on. There! Okay. That's a long way. Let's head to Erzberg and see, is that a dead end? 
It is, but it might be a good place to stop for resupplies. What the hell is... Okay, yeah, I see. Going around the forest, not through it. I was thinking, hang on a minute, I've got to be going this way. It's like, nope, there's a great big dirty, filthy swamp. Right in the way. I see the signs of beasts. If we head, stay relatively near the caravan, well, it's too late now. We had a brief glimpse of security. Hey, are they coming for us? Are they coming for us? Are we coming for them? Uh, far... Ooh. They're heading back for the woods. I don't think we can afford it. Let's keep moving. Time is not on our side. That's quite a long road. But I'm thinking at the end of it, we shall have our 12th companion. That is food for... Yeah, okay, we don't need to resupply. And we do want to be heading around this side of the mountains here. That long stretch there is going to be awkward. Wait. There are two Erzbergs. We have Erzberg and Erzberg. Yeah, because that's not going to get confusing, is it? Just wait till I get a contract that says to go to one of them. At least they're relatively nearby. Yeah, just to add to the confusion. If it were far away and far flung corners of a map, that could be a real problem for people. Perhaps the two Erzbergs were originally like one community and they split over some kind of irreconcilable difference. Each claiming to be the true Erzberg, while the other is clearly just an imposter. I like that. And maybe there's actually like loads of intermingling and cross marriage between the two. And they they each like pretend they're really, really, really different. Whereas actually, they're not that different really. Oh, there's been a fight here. Better be careful. Five brigands. Hello. Right, what we got? Raiders. We are not ready for brigand raiders yet. They have things like metal armor and bigger shields and better training. And we, we, we're barely even competent at this point, you know. It's day 15. Early campaign. What do you expect? Also, remember I'm playing on the medium combat difficulty. But on the lower tier, the, the easier economic difficulty. Harkenstadt. We would like to get in here before the market closes for the night. Wow, that was lucky. Um, yeah, this is all way out of our price range. Okay. Any good fellas here we could hire when we have some money? Niels for Bricklayer. Got impressive sideburns, but the hair there doesn't match with the sideburns. It's kind of weird. Uh, Gustav the Bright, really? It looks more like Gustav the Constipated. Okay, okay, let's just stay focused on the road. Where do we want to go? We oh, it's just straight up the road here. Got it, got it. Around this wood and up to Gothmund. We may even make it there shortly before dawn, if we're lucky and march on through the night. Now, it would be nice to give my mercenaries the adequate, proper rest they need every night, but the economy just doesn't allow it. There's, you just can't get enough food and supplies to do it at all. And work is too scarce. Even on the easy economy. Okay, no, didn't get there just before dawn, got there somewhat after. Damn, we just missed a trading caravan we could have got on. Ludger of Gothman's waiting for you as you enter the town. He hurriedly takes the cargo off your hands. Oh! Oh! I didn't think you would get here! His grubby figures dance along the chest carrying the cargo. He turns towards an, around and barks an order to one of his men. They step forward and hand you a satchel of crowns. I still think that this is blatantly related to the... Uh, necromancy and undead plague that could descend upon the land in the future. Let's take our pay. There's a two skull job. I think we need it. Um, oh my god, those are expensive. Okay. 
People, people, ooh, Gerlach. Give him a try out, see if he's got anything bad. Fear of beasts and fear of greenskins. Oh god, we just can't hire this guy. He's afraid of almost everything. Harold the Hammer. Okay, no, he just hits things hard. And Harkon the Homeless. Very expensive because of his hood and his club. The hiring fees do take into account equipment. Right, we can't hire any of these and we can take this job. A servant bids you wait for Mark Ward of Goffmund, who, he says, will be right with you. And so you wait, and wait, and wait. And finally, as you're about to leave the room for the second time, Mark Ward of Goffmund throws open the doors and rushes towards you. Oh, who's this again? The mercenary? His assistant nods and Mark Ward of Goffmund sets on a smile. Oh, most fortuitous to have you in Goffman, good captain. It is imperative that some precious commodities of mine reach Erzberg. Oh shit. What was I saying about Erzberg? Reach Erzberg as safely and quickly as possible. You are precisely who I need, for no common brigand would dare attack you and your men. Yes, I'd like to hire you for escort. Make sure the items are delivered to Werner, the guildmaster. No detours, of course. Can we come to an understanding? That's Erzberg with an E. That's the one that's further away, not the one that's closer. Just hope I don't go to the wrong Erzberg. How much were you offering to pay? He nods. Ah, you look able, so I'm willing to pay quite a bit. It's 550 crowns when the contract is done. Well, it heads us back in that direction, and there may be some good work there. Let's take it. We're not hiring any of those fellows, but we are going to stop in Harkenstadt on the way for food and supplies, and maybe even hire on a 12th man for our company. Because that would suit our ambition quite nicely. It would even bring renown and recognition to the chieftains of yore who are once again returning to make their mark upon the world and teach these youngsters a thing or two about how battle is done. About how battle is done poorly, maybe, but how battle is done. Now, who have we here? We do have Gustav Wright, uh, Vitold, Sigurd, oh my god, that what is that hairstyle? That is German 1990s, early 90s, late 80s fashion of, oh my god. The, the fringe on its own with nothing else, it's disturbing. It looks wrong. <laughs> ah, Rupert the Flagellant. You know, we do already have a priest in the company. But Grimwald here, the caravan hand, we'll give him a tryout, because Okay, no, he's an alcoholic. No. We'll take the flagellant over the alcoholic any day. Mental though that may be. And he would actually be a really good archer. As it currently stands, he has no weapons, so we'll get him that spear. And then just hope our provisions last out till journey's end because that was a rather large expenditure. Our provisions will not last till journey's end. We'll be heading back to buy some more. Having finally governed for coin and equipment, you managed to assemble a full complement of 12 able fighters. Well, that's debatable. When next you walk down Harkenstadt's main street, the men break into a full-throated marching song. A few of the townsfolk mutter under their breath about dirty mercenaries taking over the town, but others walk alongside and shout the words with you. Stand tall, brothers! People can see this is a real mercenary company now and not a handful of wandering vagabonds, Bertolf declares. We trade in strength, and now that our numbers have gone up, so will our price. It appears he has the right of it. You notice one particularly fat nobleman sizing up the company as if he already has a task in mind. The chieftains of yore are now a force to be reckoned with. 
Once the men have settled in for a celebratory drink, perhaps you should take another stroll through town to see if any more lucrative contracts may be available. The company has gained renown and the men are mostly in good spirit. We've passed the midday already, so get up to around here before we need to... No, that's a long way, okay. Let's go back into town and buy some more food. Because these men need to gob gob gobble up their grub. Because they are hungry fellows and there's only fish available. My goodness, we are suffering. Well, let's head on down this way and just hope we can keep people's wages paid. We'll pass this travelling caravan on the way as the muleteers, you know, cajole the beasts into moving along. Caravan hands, make sure stuff doesn't fall off. And now as it gets dark, we pass through this wood where recently there were brigands about. Let's keep our senses about us. They may still be around and they may sense us as vulnerable. But hey, we've got a goodly number now. More than we came through here with. Perhaps they will take us more seriously with our complete lack of training or equipment. Yeah, that's about right. Well, given the amount we've just laid out in cash, hopefully there will be another task at this journey's end. You know, hopefully. And as the peaceful music plays, and our boys hum and sing as they jostle along, there's a general sense of feeling that the company's doing relatively well. Erzberg lies ahead, and here we come, ready for our payment, because that's what mercenaries are interested in. After some looking, a man asks who you're looking for. When you say Werner the Guildmaster, he points you out toward a nearby paddock where a man is strutting about on a rather opulent looking horse. You walk on over and the man rears the steed and asks if that's the cargo Mark Word of Goffman sent. You nod. I'll leave it there at your feet. I'll come and get it. You don't. Instead asking about your pay. The man sighs and whistles to a bodyguard who hurries over. See to it when this sellsword gets the pay he deserves. Finally, you put the crate on the ground and make your leave. You gain 550 grounds. And there is work here. A warehouse burned down. A recent fire in a warehouse caused significant damage. What survived the fire is now sold at high prices. Oh, and disappearing villagers. Not a good combination. Not a good combination at all. My god, look at the prices on those medical supplies. I mean, I know they're normally about 300, even though the game always says they're worth 200, but 508? 170 for a shield. We are not buying anything here unless we have to buy a loaf of bread or a sack of grain. Sack of overpriced grain it is. And. The armor here is horrifically expensive. 952 for a very crude male shirt. Oh, good grief. Let's take another job before we end the episode. Fyodobold the merchant welcomes you, waving you in. Very well, now that you're here, would you please... Sorry. Very well, now that you're here, would you please shut the door behind you? One of the man's guards pokes his head around the corner. You smile as you slowly shut him out. Turning around, you find Fyodorbold, the merchant, walking toward a window. He stares out as he talks. I need something. It's, uh, uh, well, you don't need to know what it is. I need this something delivered to a fellow called Ewald of Grunmark. You've been to Grunmark recently, right? Yes, yes, we have. Good, good, good. He's, he's waiting for it in Grunmark, by the way. 
It's important that it actually gets there. Important enough for an armed escort for a day of travel, which is why I'm turning to you and your company. What say you, mercenary? Well, if we're heading that way, we might as well get paid. Take the jobs whichever way the wind blows. He takes a deep breath. Very well. This is what I'm prepared to offer you. You'll be paid 260 crowns when the contract is done. We shall accept your offer. And head to Grunmark, where food is much more reasonably priced. Sitting and jesting with the men while they check their kit, hone their blades and mend their armour, your mind wanders off to thinking about new ideas for improving the company and its reputation across the lands. What conclusion do we come to? A battle standard would be nice, but it takes a lot of money and we do not have much of that at the moment. Uh, this involves discovering a location. It can't be one we've already found and we've already been across a lot of the map. However, I know that your soles of your feet are itchy for the open road and we need to spread word about the company. Let us pay visit to every settlement far and wide because we've been to most of them already. In fact, ooh, quite a few we have not though. Oh, hang on, steady on, I see a punch up going on over there. Yes, let's get in there. There's soldiers and everything. I mean, the one peasant is probably dead by now. Yes, let's get to the fray. Alright. Hopefully we'll see an enemy soon. Ah, oh. aha! Uh -huh. There they are. Alright, so... Let's go to here. Can we take a shot? No. Just get closer then. Closer, closer. And if we can get him, we can't get him up there to the little hillock. That's most unfortunate. Now the soldiers, all eight of them, are going to handle quite a few of these ruffians. Mostly because they're closer. But that doesn't mean that we should shirk on the old combat duty. <coughs> Let's protect our archers and then get in there and rough up the enemy ruffle their feathers and make them rue the day. They cross paths with the chieftains of old. Right. Rupert, get <coughs> into the undergrowth. Level that spear, ready for when the man for dagger comes rushing in. A spear's a lot longer than a dagger. You should have a significant advantage. We're going to go one north to try and see the situation a bit better. Man, that guy with the crossbow is kind of reckless. Okay, okay. Is that? Yes. Can we get a shot on him? Nope. But this fellow is fair game. Nice. Let's try and shoot him again. And one more time, please. That was worth a try. Right. Get him there and stab him with a spear then. Horst, you did well this day. But I think you've earned a break, because that arrow hurt. <coughs> so the thing about these professional soldiers is they know their job too. <coughs> Not sure we'll see him alive much longer, right? Sorry, I'm just... <coughs> oh, dear. <coughs> oh. oh, the life of an asthmatic. It's not fun, guys. <coughs> oh. It's really not. Now, we're giving a little cover for our more vulnerable brothers there. <coughs> Hang on, I'm just going to have to use my inhaler. Sorry about this, everybody. So we're going to move Humbert up to within striking distance of either of these two brothers in the hope that one of them survives. And then our archers and crossbow are going to be closing distance.
post with his pierced arm muscle is well deserving of a break so we're going to pull him back so he doesn't get shot anymore because his overall health is rather low. Roderick can close ground. Rupert, the insane nutter, can just charge on out there. We're going to have to get him some better equipment because he's going to take to doing that quite often. He's a flagellant after all. <coughs> we can pretty much forget this archer now. While we might be able to track him down if he decides to stick around and take a shot, he's otherwise just gone. Let's get Lofar up here, ready to do some serious damage. Bertolf is there mainly to reduce this fellow's defence so we can hack him up for 200 axe. And we do have Torkel as well. Is he a miner? I think he was. Yes! Torkel the loyal and bloodthirsty. We should try find him a weapon that has a good fatality rate or nice fatality things. That tends to be like swords and maybe axes, I think. Right. Yeah, Vensel, good hand. And the target is gone. Alright, let's give the archer a little more incentive to flee the scene. Thank you so much. He was going to be ours. And may still be. So, we're chasing him now, but we're not chasing too hard, because we might actually catch him. And there goes our potential kill. Alright. Do we... maybe... Okay. There, so that he can run that way and we can still shoot him. Oh man, you almost shot my bloke. That's not very nice, is it? Right, Forrest, you can get a little closer to the action. You'll appreciate the view, I assure you. No one's in range, okay. Almost got him. Alright, the shot that maybe counts. Okay, so while they didn't shoot our fellow, we certainly did. We'll be having words about that later, Valdemar. Words. Big ones. Little ones. Four-letter words. Or even three-letter words, like aim. Or four-letter words, like shoot. Guess what? We can't get there. We can get here. Maximum killage! Yeah! And now he's just going to go. Yeah, you perfect. So the reason I'm trying to get the kills in here is I'm only going to get loot from the bodies I, my men personally slay. I'm not going to get to plunder anywhere on these fellas to take out. So we might get like one kill, essentially. Uh, there you go, horse. Take it easy now. You've you've done your job. You're badly wounded. Right. Let's just run up close for now. And then Rupert, stab. Baldemar, you've done enough damage. Uh, Rudolph, move up to there. Uh, Bertolf and others can close ground. And then maybe, just maybe, we'll get to take this for- oh yeah. Axe to face! <laughs> Wallop! Off with his head. <laughs> and some mushrooms that are gonna go off really soon. So we'll be eating them first. Okay, let's head on our way. Did nobody leveled? And we got a dagger here we can work on. Um, who? Dagger, pike. Sword and shield. Hybrid build. 
I remember. <gasps> Ooh. Whereas he is more of a pure archer candidate. Actually, three stars is good, but 34 is pretty low to begin with. Let's just hit the road and hope our medical supplies don't run out. All in all, a relatively successful episode. We haven't had any major losses, apart from some of the money we parted with from that horrifically overpriced grain. Was it bread? I think it was for grain. Yeah, it was like 85. 85! Five. Outrageous. And again, the place was running very low on supplies. We had a warehouse burned down. There was a shortage, you know, supply and demand, overpriced food. We'll be getting some more victuals in Grunwald, Grunmark when we get there. And it's not far from here. It brings up peace. Interesting name for a company. All this running around the land has increased the stamina of the men. One runs in place, holding a finger to his neck. He remarks that his heart rate isn't going up at all. Another brother remarks that the guy doesn't even know how to count. The running man pauses. Oh, that's right. Carl the Black gains one maximum fatigue. It's all worth it, it all adds up really, you know. Extra fatigue point or two means every now and then he'll get to take that extra point of action. You old of groom marks waiting for you as you enter the town. He hurriedly takes the cargo off your hands. Oh, oh, I, I didn't think you would get here. His grubby fingers dance along the chest carrying the cargo. He turns around and barks an order to one of his men. They step forward and hand you a satchel of crowns and we have now been paid. There's another two skull contract available but I think that's gonna have to wait until the next episode after we sell this knife. There we go. You know, I hope you've all enjoyed this episode. And I'm going to buy that Gamberson and that shield. And I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next one. But for now, take care, guys. Cheerio.